so I've just wrapped up a interview with one of our students, Johnny. Uh, he's someone I didn't interview with before on the channel, so you might see him and see, hey, I've seen that guy before. That's correct. He was on the channel probably a year ago, and that was when he first went from zero to about 6K a month with his agency in roughly about two months of joining my program. Uh, now we did an updated interview based on where he's currently at. He did, he said, between 10 or 11,000 in the last 30 days. So he's grown quite a bit from there, but he's also got a few other things that he does. He works a full-time job and he has an e-commerce brand that he's running as well. So he's got three things on the go. It's a really interesting chat. There is a little bit of a Wi-Fi internet connection issue. Uh, there'll be certain points where it kind of glitches. So Hopefully that doesn't disrupt your viewing experience too much and I hope you enjoy. All right, guys and gals, welcome back to another video. Today, what I'm doing is I'm actually sitting down here with Johnny. Now, Johnny is somebody I've had on our channel before. He's a student in my program. We've worked together for, I think, probably a year and a half at this stage. And we did an interview before when Johnny hit about 6,000 per month in his agency. And he got there pretty fast. You know, we're talking about a couple of months into the journey properly. After joining our program, he got to that point. But where he's currently at, you know, I know in the last 30 days or so, Johnny, right, you did around 10K euro in that month, in that 30 day period. And um, so things have changed. Now, for context, I'll get Johnny to give himself an intro now because he doesn't just run an agency, which I even mentioned to Johnny off camera. I just think it's pretty cool because, you know, my story was that I did an agency full time and I wasn't working a job while doing that. Whereas Johnny's got a few things on the go. Yet he's uh he's pushing good numbers with uh, with them all. So, Johnny, if you want to give people a, a bit of a formal intro as to who you are, what you do, and what you think people should know. Oh, it's, it's not not a new face to the channel anyway. But um, yeah, my name's Johnny. I run an email marketing agency, an e-commerce brand, and also have a full-time job on the site. It makes it a bit different from yourself, but um, yeah. There you go, man. The holy, the That's holy trinity. <laughs> the holy trinity. <laughs> And yeah, so, Johnny, just for, pe for people that are brand new, let's just mm -hmm. give them a quick intro as to, like, how did you get into the agency world? How did you start? And what did the journey yeah. look like from, let's just say, from zero to 10K? What kind of changed along the way? And then we can obviously touch on some of the other mm -hmm. stuff you're doing as well. Yeah, yeah. So, um, for the agency, obviously, I think you said this in the last video as well, I was running an e-commerce brand, drop, well, mainly dropshipping. And... um. I said to yourself before Adam, you know yourself and drop ship and it can be you can have months where it's all unreal 10k 20k next month but yeah this product is, is seasonal it's obviously not trending as much you dip down to 2k so i was doing that for ages and it came to a stage then when i, when I was running my brand i think it's on 30k in three consecutive months during the summer i was balling next thing boom down to like five five and a half six k i was like oh this can't be can't be going myself through this like so i um I started looking for, for alternatives then and obviously came across yourself. I think we were we were in talks for a good while actually. Yeah. Across Instagram and email and stuff. I was I was getting your follow up emails. I was like, this fella's onto something. Um so I was obviously looking at the YouTube videos and stuff, success stories, reached out to two two or three people as well, actually. Mm -hmm. And um I said, look, I think it was in the new year, so around February, end of January, February, I said, look, I'm gonna bite the bullet. And um to be fair, like I, I did have quick enough success. I think that that could contribute that like I, I was kind of in the online money space mm -hmm. if you want mm -hmm. to say for sure um yeah. so I kind of I, gra I grasped I grasped it well um I think when, when was our, our last interview it was late last year was it mid last year mid last year man. around the yeah. six yeah up around the six six k mark um and I would say probably that the main thing that's changed between now and then at that time I was kind of like obviously had the team. I had the team under me, and but I was very, I was very focused on get as many clients as possible. Uh, keep the clients coming in the door, all that sort of stuff. So, like it's funny enough now at the moment we actually have less clients than back then, but they're higher paying clients. So I I've kind of tried to shift my focus from get as many clients as possible to getting clients in the door, but keeping them happy, keeping them long term, and our retention rate has skyrocketed since I've done that. And since I said to you, um, remember I was saying that I haven't done any outreach since November. Like, mm -hmm. it's um, well, I'm back doing another last like month or so. I'm scaling, but um, it was literally all referrals, 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 and I'm like, I have more time to myself because I'm not on call. Like, well, I have to take sales calls, but I'm not doing outreach all the time, and just making sure the service delivery is bang on, and we're keeping the clients that we have when we're up. But I think I messaged you there two weeks ago. Just just hit over the 10k mark, looking for that award I was. <laughs> but um, I think we're about 11.3 11, 11 now at the moment. 
So uh, you know, it's it. The main thing that's changed is I've kind of just shifted my mindset because I I was on six k for like three months, but that like that like dropped. I I lost I think like three clients now. They were all startups. They were they were reasonably low paying clients anyway, and it just didn't go well for them. It's not like service delivery was bad, but I was I was just kind of like I was like right if it, if this keeps going like I'm gonna it's gonna come stage where I'm gonna have to look at the team like look at make sure everything is going going smoothly. So I I done that. Expanded the team then, making sure that we were we're meeting deadlines. Like we have graphic designers, copywriters that that were there if if needed, if one was dropped off sick or couldn't work the weekend or whatever. And um, yeah, that was kind of been been the main focus. Just I was like, I think I can't remember who I was talking to. It was someone else that you you had an interview with, and they were like, service delivery is everything. That kind of clicked with me. I was like, I don't spend half enough time making sure that I'm getting reports done at the end of the month, making sure look like asking the client, are you happy? Is there more that that we could be doing instead of just focusing on getting that that strike notification? Like, do you know what I mean? It's very easy to do that when you when you see your your success like so quick. It's just like you're focusing on the numbers. But if you're looking at this long term, and as I said to you, like wanting to do this full time, you really have to look at the business as a whole. For sure. Yeah, definitely, man. Definitely. Uh, Johnny, message me after this and we can get you the award sent out, by the way. All I need is your your address and we'll get you that 10k award yeah, sent yeah, yeah. over, man. <laughs> <laughs> perfect Definitely. man I, I get back to Ireland now I won't be getting over here to Portugal but <laughs> no no for sure and I say safe and sound back in the home office but that makes sense man like you went through a lot of yeah. I guess big learning curves through that process so you mentioned how with drop yeah. shipping right you could have those months where you could do 30k 20k whatever and then it was that seasonality mm. of the business then dropping off and you're like fucking scratching your head going what the hell is going on here you probably had similar yeah. moments with the agency, probably not as extreme, but as you mentioned, you had that period of 6K for a couple of months, then maybe drop a couple of clients, revenue will dip a bit, yeah. and that can be similar. You can feel that yeah. similar effect as to what am I doing? Do I have control on this? And yeah. it sounds like you made a very good pivot, which is, as you mentioned, putting the focus more on the delivery, making sure that the clients were a good fit, and then obviously, of course, that your service was 10 out of 10, yeah. as, as much as you could. You'll never yeah. get... 10 out of 10, you're always going to chase that, that continued excellence as you go. But yeah. when it comes to, say, the difference in the service delivery, Johnny, say, let's just take a client you might have had back then where you were just getting things started, first few clients in versus now. Would you be a lot more involved yourself now with the client? Or is it that you just have a better system so that when they do come in, you have things set up in a way where they are mm -hmm. just getting a more predictable result what would you say the main kind of difference is there probably like getting feedback more um instead of like a client coming to you after three months just like stopping the service like i always ask for feedback like what can we do more what can we do more and as a result of that like systems internal systems have been better and yeah kind of touch, probably touching base with the client more as well um Giving that more personal touch, I suppose, instead of like looking at them just like like my big my biggest pain client now is literally like a best friend to me. Like, do you know what I mean? It's actually gas. Like he 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 was over in Dubai there, I think two or three months ago, like and he FaceTimed me and everything. Like it's it's good that it's good to have that. And like he's he's pushed three clients as of now, yeah, three clients my way as well. Like, so it's like it's not like look, I'm gonna make friends with him so he can make money, but yeah. it's just the fact of like getting involved a bit more, like getting to know the person, knowing what their their goals are. Instead of saying, "Oh yeah, look, you pay me," I'll tell you what you, what we what we made you at the end of the month or whatever. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, makes sense, man. More of that that human connection. Uh, I did an interview yesterday, Johnny, with a guy who is at twelve k yeah. a month now, so pretty much exact same as yourself, twelve k USD. Mm. And he mentioned something very similar that for him there was a point where he kind of changed the view of his clients, where it went from you know transactional. Yeah come in, pay me money, give you a results, tell you the result at the end of the month and then keep going to a point now where yeah. he would he would agree. It's like he's very close with his clients. Doesn't mean yeah. he has to be best friends with them, mm. but he knows that if they're going to leave him go, it's going to be a very hard decision for them because it's not now just about the performance. It's about the fact that they actually really like working with yeah. him. He's really easy to work with and they've got a good connection. So you'll yeah. definitely benefit from that same situation. Plus, then you've got the the referrals, yeah. you know, coming from that guy, which is, like you said, it's not that you would yeah. try and be his friends just to get referrals, but it just shows the power of giving your clients what they want, you know, a nice experience to work with you, a yeah. damn good yeah. result. And of course, they're going to obviously recommend you mm. when it makes sense, man. 
yeah no that's unreal man what's your yeah. your highest paying client then at the moment in terms of is it set retainer or do they pay commission on the email revenue you generate yeah would be the rough figure yeah so my, our highest paying client let's say aside aside from um our, our only commission-based client or i think it's 1.9 mm-hmm. 1.9k um but then our highest paying client is 10 percent of email revenue so he's he's i think it's usually in around four four k mark each one yeah solid man solid it's a good spread definitely and Johnny, in terms of balancing mm. the, the three things that you're doing, right? So full-time job, an agency that did 10K in the last month or so, and then the brands that you're running as well. Like, obviously, mm. you've got to work and you got to put it in the time, but m- there's so many people out there that will have a job and they think that doing one thing on the side is impossible. Like, they think even just adding yeah. one or two hours a day on top of their 40-hour week in the job, is just not even something they could do. It's not even the like time that they could find. What would you what would you say to those yeah. people based on what you found about doing those three things, which are all, you know, at a really good scale. You're making good money from all three of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd say probably definitely for like the first, I think from the zero to six K mark, um, definitely for me anyway, to, like I'll be honest, like there's no such thing as balance. Being yeah. hundred percent honest, like if if like I'd say even even yourself, like you've seen like Hundred percent students that actually make money don't have balance for the first couple of months. So like, how are how are you going to systems trying to hire a team? Like, it's it's only when you have all that done and it's literally just client management that then you can obviously find a small bit of balance. But um, definitely for the, like, there's no there's no balance for, for the first for the first while. Um, like I was just I was just getting up early before work, putting in the hours after work making sure I was eating right, making sure I was minimizing screen time, getting to the gym, just trying to make everything optimized so you actually have energy to do it. Um, leaving the phone in another room is definitely a game changer. I was trying to stay off the phone for the first three hours in the morning, just um, just bop out while reaching, getting getting things done. But the way I look at it is like, and you'll probably agree, if you want it bad enough, you'll make it work. Like. 100%, man. We've definitely got a split mm-hmm. in terms of people that come in. There's a lot of people like yourself that will will just go, you know, as we'd say, balls, balls to the wall, right? Like as in they're willing to just yeah. get up early, stay up a bit later, put in the extra hours where you can, find the time in all the places and then just really yeah. scale as fast as you can. On the other side, we do have a lot of people recently yeah. where they mightn't have a goal as big as 10K a month or 20K a month. So for them, what we're seeing is a kind of more slow progression. So what that means is, their first client, let's say, pays them 500 a month. They might get that client between month one and month two. But then by month three, they're at maybe 2K a month. So in your case, you were mm. probably at 6K a month or you know, yeah. somewhere near that figure in that same timeline. Mm. But they're doing it the more kind of like balanced approach. So it's interesting, man, because we've seen people do it. Yeah. Um, but it's just the growth obviously is not going to be the same. Like someone couldn't expect to get your level of growth yeah if they're not willing to get up a bit early to do the work it's like it just ain't going to happen you know yeah. whereas yeah, if look, someone yeah, says hey look yeah. i'll just get to 2k then yeah you know we've seen people do it pretty well with you know hour to a day it just of course has to be yeah. focused work you know very dedicated like you said uh not just messing around on your phone for yeah. an hour or two but very specific work that's going to really drive the drive the results forward yeah yeah no look 100 man it's like whatever you put in your you're gonna you're gonna get out like it's the same with the e-commerce brand like after the full-time job like the agency is always going to be number one um it's a cash flow business no investment really to be honest so that's always like number one for me um so then like with the e-commerce brand that's not been that's not been a massive priority it's just something we're, that we're chipping along at one, one probably one to 1.5 hours a day um as i said to you earlier sitting around that 4k mark i know there's only gonna ever sit around that doing that type of work um then if it's a scale that obviously I know would have to pull back a bit at the agency, which I don't want to do. So you just have to, whatever you find your balance, I suppose, whatever your balance is, but just don't expect to do one to two hours a day and be doing the 20 K, 20 K mark. So. For sure. For sure. Mm. I can't think of a single person that has come in and got to even to be honest, like 10 to 20 K a month with one to two hours a day. Well then still having you know, a full-time mm. job. Like if someone's going to go to those, those heights, you're 
pretty much always going to be doing it full time. You'd be probably yeah. one of the exceptions, Johnny, where you still have a job that when they're at 10K, most people at that point have kicked the bucket and they've said, right, I'm all in on this yeah. thing and I'm going to push it on. Um, but like definitely anyone I can think of, say, doing 20, 30K a month, mm. no, they, they, ain't, they ain't doing one to two hours a day. You know, they've built a bigger business and they're doing that. Not full time, yeah. like 10, oh, 12 hours a day, but you know, a good few hours for sure. Yeah, unless unless you're like you've proper like proper systems in place, maybe you could get to that eight to ten k mark doing two hours, maybe. But then you're looking at sales calls like two sales calls a day is an hour already. Yeah. So like it, it's yeah. yeah, it's definitely not definitely not for sure, man, for sure. And Johnny, we were talking off camera, kind of to your goal going forward, right? Because obviously you've got three things that are all working yeah. pretty well. So where do you see, mm -hmm. like, where do you see your focus being in the next say year? If you were to decide, yeah. let's say tomorrow you woke up and you said, you know what, this agency thing, actually, I do want to, I want to push this, right? And I want to get this to 20K. What do you think you'd mm -hmm. need to do to go from where you're currently at with it to almost yeah. doubling the business and get to 20K? Yeah, well, like the way I look at it is, man, like I'm going to give you an example. Um, as I said to you, like we, we've only really started outreach back again the last couple of weeks. Um, just due to the referrals coming in, we didn't really have to do much. But um, like I'm only able to take sales calls between five, five to six and then eight to nine. So I, or eight to ten. So I literally only have three hours a day where I can take sales calls. Like the rest is either work. Like obviously deep work in the morning, making sure that the current clients are doing well, or doing a job, come home, take like between that five to six, take a sales call if I have one, then go to the gym, come back, take more sales calls. But so literally like that's all obviously a limitation in itself already. So if I was to free up another eight hours of my day, which I would have for my my full time job, like that's that's what like I'd be able to scale my outreach again. That like I think we're running about seven seven on instantly i think we're running seven email accounts um mm -hmm. so literally like the sky's the limit with them like do you know what i mean it's it's a volume it's a volume game when it comes to that yeah. so number one is like opening up uh, more time in my calendar just obviously being able to nail out reach more as well then if i had that more time in the day makes sense man 100 percent. like that you've you've clarity on exactly the inputs that you need to do to get to that point which again obviously comes down to time and having the right amount of time to be able to do it man uh johnny i think people will find this interesting You've talked quite a bit so far. You've talked on going to the gym. That's part of your daily routine. You've talked on like minimizing your screen time, eating the right food. And what that all screams to me is, yeah. you know, you could call that biohacking. You could call that lifestyle optimization. But what it all mm -hmm. is, is as you very clearly said, it's basically organizing the things in your life so that you have the right energy. So that when you're working, you're able to work. You're focused. You can actually go deep. You can get what might take one person four hours you can get that done in two hours because you're just in a better headspace yeah. you're more tapped in what would you say would be if again if you're starting this whole journey again like let's just say three things you would do that most people probably don't do you know just yeah. based on their standard daily life what would those three things be that you would do what that you would implement that you think would be really kind of pivotal on a, on a lifestyle perspective to get you successful to get you in the right flow and, and actually making the right progress let's say if you're, if you're going to biohack inside of things i definitely say like just making sure you're getting eight hours sleep every night is one mm -hmm. um eating healthy is definitely another one of going to the gym you obviously need an outlet as well or you burn yourself out i've had it i've had it where i burn myself out like it's just like pulling back around just a small, small bit but um so i'd say sleep diet and gym is definitely number one for me anyway i think everything else falls into place after that but um I would say then just screen time and screen time is like yeah, like, it's often when used to be awful bad there like during COVID like I was like I have to get this down like um it's just leaving the phone leaving the phone in a different room um and then like when we we're talking about balance like when I was getting latency, I think it went like five and a half months where like no drinking no yeah. no party and all of that just like head down like I I think like like there's no harm in doing that regardless um just to see what your full potential is like and. Um, that's what that's what I done anyway, and like it, it was necessary. Like I'm able to do that now. Like go out and join myself now. Like, but that's yeah. I've I've built the systems. Have have obviously yeah the team there in place as well. Like so, that's that that's definitely that's the huge. I say you were probably the same, sure. For sure, man. 
for sure exact same exact same and i probably did i don't even know how long but like that a good old chunk of time you know six months nine months whatever it was mm. and i think you need yeah. to do it you know i say you need to do it that's probably the wrong word i think i would recommend you do it because i know people that don't do it yeah. and they still go out every week and they still build the business mm. they want to build there's a, there's a guy i know in ireland that kind of does that and it amazes me because he's doing really well yeah. and that's just he's always done that he's, he goes out probably every week but for most yeah. people if you just go through that period it's just gonna it's just gonna unlock this other side of you you know it's just gonna unlock parts of yourself you never knew and you're gonna tap into yeah. that focus and a different side of confidence that you might have had before which is really key and i think what you're then experiencing now johnny which is that you can now go back to quote unquote like yeah. normal life and you can go out go on holidays with your friends you can go out yeah. go party and go drinking but you're doing it from this different perspective because you know at any moment if you want to stop you can stop it's not like something you have to do all the time you can tap back into that mindset then. exactly you've got the yeah. full control and then i think you can actually mm. enjoy it 10 times more because you'll savor it more and you'll know yeah. that you've actually gotten yeah. yourself basically to this really great place of control where you know again any moment if this is getting too much yeah. i can just stop and for a month i'll just not do anything you know i'll not drink and I won't go out much. Yeah. And then you can go and do it for two months if you want, mm -hmm. just knowing that you can get to click the fingers and, and take the reins back, man. I think that's really powerful just on a personal level. But obviously for business, it's, uh, yeah. it's going to help as well, for sure, man. Would you find yeah. the gym to be a big influence? Because for me, it was, um, whether it's gym, running, training, like you said, an outlet, blow off steam. Uh, it just, mm -hmm. you know, even hitting the sauna, man. Like since I'm back here yeah. in Ireland for a few weeks, there's a nice sauna in the gym. I'm hitting it every every chance I can because just the release yeah. you get from it just come out so clear headed. I'd say you probably agree. Yeah. I know there's going to be people watching this that are big in fitness, but they mightn't have gotten into the business side yet. And yeah. I think that if you take the fitness mindset, you can transfer yeah. that into business. And if you do, you're going to do fucking really well because you're probably used to being mm. consistent in the gym, sticking to a decent routine, and the you just have to transfer that thing to this different type of work mm. you know it's very different slamming yeah. weights versus typing on your keyboard but it's a similar yeah. mindset that yeah. gets you there but you, do you know what do you know what the biggest takeaway i think there man is like you obviously unless you're pumping steroids like which i know yeah. probably 99 percent of people i'd be going to be doing like but you have to go months on months before you see any sort of tangible mm -hmm. results mm -hmm. and like that's kind of what you have to be prepared for um like i know there's obviously anomalies but that's what you have to be prepared for when you're starting your own business because you're gonna be you're gonna be a newbie like you know I mean everything's gonna be new to you. Um and I think it's it's a pity as well. Like that's the people that don't like see the see the future and like don't see that if they keep going they'll make it, they end up falling off just before they have, probably actually get a client or get a couple of clients on board. Like hundred percent, man. Yeah, you're right. Like there's so many people that come in and, and get great results. You'd be a great example of that, of someone who comes in fast, takes action fast, gets results fast. But of course, there's going to be people where it's going to take longer. Mm. Like they're going to need more than two months. They're going to need maybe three yeah. months in a bit to get a first client or their first decent paying client that really kind of changes the game for them. But like the guaranteed way to not work, make this thing work is just to not do it long enough. It's the, it's the most simple and cliche way. And obviously, if you can take that, that mindset from the gym where the same thing applies, you need to go months to, be able to get results, then yeah. you'll be fine be fine so that's why i find like people who are very into fitness do very well in this kind of game because you've already got the habits and kind of the character there you just yeah. got to change the, uh, the kind of work you're doing so we had to cut the interview quite short we again just had some internet issues uh, johnny's currently on holidays in portugal so yeah you know wi-fi can be unpredictable sometimes but it is what it is if you want to connect with johnny i will leave a link to his instagram below this so that you can reach out to him have a chat to him uh, he's been in my program for a long time he knows a lot of the people in my program and he's probably someone good to reach out to if you're looking for just some some insights or some extra tips and such so i hope you enjoyed if you have any interest in working with me inside of my program where you would have basically getting the same help that Johnny has gotten, which is access to mentoring, such as calls every week, accountability, a community, of course, training videos and templates and resources to really just give you everything that I have from my own business that I've built. But if you feel like you need that extra help to really just keep you on track, make sure that what you're doing is working. Because as we mentioned in this video, this works, you know it works, this opportunity works. 
It's just if you are gonna stick with it long enough and obviously work on the right things. You could work at this for 12 months, but if you're not working on the right things, then it won't work. If you're working on the right things consistently, then within a few months, you will see results with this. So if you wanted to get any information about that, you'll see some information underneath this video in the description of the video. And I hope you enjoyed.